my friend, uh, a guy called Francis Bull, who I've been friends with at school since I was like 12 years old, my, my best friend, who was a, who's always been a very eccentric character to anyone that knows him, um, you know, just always coming up with wacky ideas and, you know, just like things you just like noise and be like, shut up, Francis. My best friend was like, shut up. Anyway, so at the time he was at Edinburgh, he was yapping on with me about this, like how, you know, you know, this new thing that he was doing, this new business idea, this new sort of, you know, private jet, this new this, and I, and I was like, uh, and then amidst the chaos of all these things, he was like, oh yeah, and I've met this production company, and they want to film a show about me, and I was like, oh my God, I was like, this is, this is like, this is it, this is the, you've finally gone crazy. It's this, and then it's, <laughs> then it's the tit, it's the foil helmet, and then it's like the prepping, you're gonna be hiding, you're like, you're going completely insane. Like, it's like the, you know, and he was like, no, no. And the, for some reason he kept going on about this TV show. And he's like, yeah, yeah, this is like in channel four. And I was like, yeah, like, shut up. I was like, channel four, do not want to film a show about you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be called like, it's gonna be called Chelsea Girls. And they want me, I'm gonna be playing polo and, and we're gonna film the pilot. And I was like, all right, mate, yeah, cool. And then I think a few weeks later, he was like, yes, yeah, so I've done the pilot. And uh, I spoke to them and they, th I told them about you and I, they really want to meet you. And, uh, and I was thinking like, yeah, okay. So he kept going on about this and eventually, so I come to London, he's like, just, please just meet them. I was expecting to go to like a big yellow self storage and just be in this like dodgy room and there being like one guy with a camera, like who was like some felon or something. But we go to Shoreditch and we go to the T building, which is like this huge, um, impressive building. And we go up and sure enough, there's this whole production company with like people and, you know, like, you know, like rooms and stuff. And I was like, Francis, like what the hell? This was also a time I had super long hair. I was dating this Czech model who was absolutely beautiful called Eva, who was six foot three, um, who I met in New York. And uh, anyway, and I was wearing like a full on fur jacket. So I was still a little bit like ostentatious. Anyway, and I think they saw me and they just thought, you're a plonker, you're perfect. <laughs> like you are exactly what we need for TV. Some like long haired guy with a fur jacket with this like girl, six for three girlfriend. They were just like, yeah, it's like, who's this Muppet? Anyway, so I, I sat and I did an interview and they said, yeah, okay, well, we look, we're starting, we want a film and you know, we're gonna think about start like, you know, starting in like three weeks and stuff. And, um, and yeah, so then I remember the first scene and I kind of went along with it. We signed a contract and it was at the time, it was me, Francis, Spencer, Hugo, Rosie, Louise, Thompson. Like we all knew each other. We were all friends and we were like, oh, so you're going to do the TV show as well. And we kind of just thought, why not? My first scene was like a rowing scene with Francis and I'd never rowed before. And you know, um, that's my when all the shrugs come into <laughs> exactly. Into I play. didn't have the traps exactly. Yeah. So I hadn't, I hadn't been, I hadn't been shrugging at that point. So anyway, so Francis was like, "Yeah, it's fine. We'll just, I'll just, you know, it'll be easy. I'll just teach you once we get there." So we turn up to Henley on this freezing day, and uh, Francis is like, "Okay, we'll we'll go out into the boat before we start filming." And it's pissing it down, and so we go to this ergo, and Francis is like, "Right, so you pull and you pull there," and they're like, "Right, guys, we need to, we need to start filming. Come on, we need to go." And I was like. So we get into this boat, there's all these cameras. I'm so nervous because I wasn't used to being around cameras. And we start just chatting. We're just there freezing, just sitting on this boat, just having some like absolutely gash chat about, I don't know, whatever. And then we fall in and- I On remember, purpose? No, we, oh, right. we, we push off and then basically I then correct the boat because I, I shouldn't have corrected and we fall in, we jump out. And then I was thinking, oh God, and they had it all on camera. And I was thinking, oh, like, please don't show that because they, they pitched the show as like, a you know, we're gonna make you guys look like the London Gossip Girl. And I was like, so cool. I was like, I'm basically gonna be Chuck Bass. And I was like, that's not very Chuck Bass, falling into the water, that's like quite, you've been framed. And yeah. anyway, so so I was speaking to them and I was like, oh, you're not gonna show that. And they're like, no, no, definitely not gonna show that. Like, we want you guys to look great. We want you, like, you, we want you to look cool. And then I remember getting a call from the head producer. She was like, hi, Fred, yeah, so, I've seen the footage and we are, we are gonna keep it. And I was like, I remember just feeling at the time I was in Bristol and I was like, that's it. I was like, I, my life's over. I'm, I'm gonna be in some stupid show where they're, <laughs> ultimately I was in some stupid show, but as in I'm gonna be in some show and the first thing I'll be falling in, we're gonna look like idiots. And anyway, it turned out, yeah, then we filmed and it turned out to be the, yeah, it turned out to be Made in Chelsea. And I did it all whilst I was doing my last year of university and I didn't tell anyone. And then it just kind of happened. 
And it was a really, really wild experience like that, I, that I'm very grateful for going from like, cause it was like a sort of overnight success in a way, which as we know, there's no such thing as an overnight success, but it really was. I went from being like, no one know who, knew who I was to suddenly in London, a lot of people knowing who I was. Um, cause when it first came out, it was popular and lots of people knew it. And like the adverts on the show were just like flashes of just me or like, you know, another character or something. So yeah, it was a really cool, fun experience. But, um, I often think that it, I don't think it necessarily changed me in any way. I think it was just fun. I, ne I didn't feel like it was a sort of, yeah, I'm f finally getting recognized for this. It was just like, it was just a bit of fun. You said something about it's almost like overnight success. And I kind of resonate with that because when Jack came out Love Island, he went from a normal geezer where he had a peer group and friendship group and a network, but then suddenly everybody in the fucking country knowing who this guy was. And at the time he said it was really great. But then after about eight, nine months, when the money started running out and you're carrying on partying and there's drinks and there's everything else that goes with that, you slowly start to find yourself going into depression. And he spoke about suicide and, and stuff. With yourself, I mean, you're a headstrong kind of guy. I, I get that. But that overnight bang, everyone knowing you, I mean, was there any, was there any kind of moments where you felt, Jesus, this is a bit overwhelming? Um, yes and no. I, I think that it's also, you know, it's so easy for someone to listen to that kind of stuff and think, yeah, fucking grip. Like, oh my God, you're complaining about this. But I, I think, it, trust me when I say that, it, you know, it's the sort of seductive dark, the seductive side of the darkness, which can pull you in, which is the sort of the nightclubs. And you can, you see all sorts of, you know, it's very sad. You see all sorts of suicides and stuff that happen in the reality TV world because of the, you know, the pressures. And, but ultimately I, I do think that, like yeah alcohol and drugs are extremely extremely negative force i don't drink personally i've stopped um but i feel that's that's something that's a way that i've really managed to sort of stay out of what, that why have we stopped drinking uh it stops it stops serving me it's sort of like a i mean i don't really go into it too much but like a pros and cons thing okay. like i just think i looked at it and suddenly the cons were outweighing the pros quite greatly which okay. and that's really sort of helped me um stay out and navigate but I feel like the rea like the reality TV world and that sort of social media stuff, it takes, some people are more susceptible and suggestible naturally and can and can be far more like worse affected by it. Like literally, I just do, I don't, I don't think I'm a famous guy. I don't think I'm better than anyone. I, and like, I remember doing, the, when I did the reality TV stuff, like I was almost shocked that people like, I always kind of shocked people wanted to take a photo with me. And I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's nice. Like I, I, I never for once thought, yeah, I am actually kind of fucking badass. <laughs> like I, I, I genuinely, I, I don't see that. With music, there was something I enjoyed about music because I genuinely believed that it was something I'd spent 20 years doing. So when someone compliments me on that, I'm very like thankful and grateful and I believe it. Whereas if someone says with Made in Chelsea, like, oh yeah, that, you know, you're on that show and I'm just like, I'm, it's just, it's just a TV show, you know? Mm. So, um, but I also see that there's lots of people that generally they do start to believe that they are something special after doing reality shows and stuff. Mm -hmm.